So in this video, we're going to be going over the quotient rule or the quotient property of exponents. So that's where you have a base to an exponent, a base to an exponent. And this base, that could be a variable or a number. And so you're going to subtract those exponents with that same base there. This video, we're also going to be going over negative exponents. Those are going to show up in this video as well. Here are the four examples we're going to do in this video here. Now, before we get into it, let's review what a power is. So here we have b to the x. So this exponent here is telling you how many of the b's are being multiplied or x number or x factors of b being multiplied. Let's look at why the quotient property works. So here we have 4 to the 5th over 4 to the 3rd. So this says you have five 4's being multiplied in the numerator. So here we go. There's one 4, 2, three, four, five fours being multiplied in the numerator. And then our denominator, we're going to have three fours being multiplied. So here we go. There's one, two, three fours being multiplied. So pop quiz, what is four over four or four divided by four? That makes one. Well, here we have another four over four, another one, another one there, leaving us with one times one times one times two more fours being multiplied. Well, anytime you multiply one times a number, you just get that number back. So we are left with two fours being multiplied. So again, when you are dividing powers and you have the same base, you're going to subtract the exponents. Here's an example here, 42a squared over 6a to the 10th power. Now we will be going over two different ways of looking at this. Uh, I do recommend watching both ways. You might actually like the second way more. So first way is you kind of split it up. Now you can write it out this way or you can just think of it this way. But this is basically what we're doing. We're going to split the 42 over 6, the numbers, and then we'll have the variables a squared over a to the 10th there. So now we apply all of our properties there. So this is just regular 42 divided by regular 6. Well, that's going to make a regular 7. And then we have a squared over a to the 10th. Well, that's going to be a to the, now we use the quotient rule and we subtract 2 minus 10. So that's going to be a to the negative 8th. Some teachers, this isn't going to be good enough. They're going to want all positive exponents. So we're going to use the negative exponent property here. So that's still going to be a 7 in the numerator. Now, when you have negative exponents, that's kind of a reciprocal type idea. So if it's in a numerator, we're going to put it in the denominator, A, and then it goes from a negative to a positive exponent. So 7 over A to the 8th. Now, the second way of looking at this is it's removing common factors it's also called canceling, like the more generic term here. So removing common factors or dividing by six uh, on the 42 and the six here. We start with the numbers. We'll do the variables next. So we have a 42 over six. Well, we can divide out a six from both. So 42 divided by six makes seven and six divided by six is just one. Next up, we'll, let's look at the A factors. We have two A's here and 10 A's here. Well, we can remove two factors of a from both. So we can remove two factors from a there. Now we have no more a's there. And then if we remove two of the 10 factors, we have eight factors of a remaining. So now we just clean it up. Looking at the numerator, there's just a seven there, the number seven. And here we have one times a to the eighth. Well, that's just going to leave us with a to the eighth and done that way there. So you can use your quotient property up here or you can do remove common factors or canceling down here. Two different good ways of doing it. Another example, b to the 6th, c to the ninth, d to the 8th over b to the 4th, c, d to the 7th. Here we go. Start out, we are going to be looking at two different ways of doing this. We'll start out by using the quotient rule. So here we'll go b to the 6 minus 4. So same base. Subtract the exponent. So that's going to be b squared. Now let's look at the, the c factor. So we have a c, and now we're going to do a 9. And this is one factor of c here. There's not a 1 written up there because there's just one factor of c, so you don't write a 1. So that's going to make c to the 8th. Last up, d to the 8th, d to the 7th. That's going to be d to the, and then do 8 minus 7. And again, when you have one factor, you don't write, you don't need to write a 1 up there. It's just d to the 1th power is just d. 
Now, if we want to use the remove common factors or canceling method, we can do that here. Uh, looking at the B's, we can remove four factors of B from both the denominator and the numerator. So remove four factors of B, leaving us from six, remove four of those. We have two remaining and no more in the denominator. Here we have one factor of C we can remove from numerator and denominator or cancel a C. So from the nine, we'll take away one factor, leaving us with eight and then no more in the denominator. And then here, the most we can remove from both is seven. So we'll remove the from the eight, we'll remove seven, leaving us with one, and then there's no more in the denominator. So here for our answer, we're gonna have B to the second power, and then C to the eighth power, and then D to the first power. We don't write a one, because one factor of D is just D. Have you go ahead and try this one out on your own? Pause the video, then come on back and see how you did. We are gonna be doing this two different ways. You may like the second way better, so follow this example to the end so we can split them all up. Now you can write them out like this if you want, but most people just do this in their brain. We're gonna do the, the seven over 28 first, then we'll do the U's, then the V's, then the W's. So here they are all separated out so it's easier for our eyes to follow. So now seven over 28 is just a regular fraction, so we reduce it just the regular way. What number divides both seven and 28? Well, seven does, so seven divided by seven is one, and then 28 divided by seven makes four, so just reduce it the way you normally would. Now let's look at the u's. So here we're gonna do a u, we're using the quotient rule, so we're gonna do the nine minus seven makes a two. Let's look at the v's here. V, we have a one factor of v, it's a hidden one, and then a six down here, so we'll do one minus six, and that makes a negative five. We're thinking like uh, money, you have a dollar, but you owe six dollars. You don't have enough to cover it, so it's gonna be negative, and then how much do you owe? Well, six minus one is five dollars. And then the w's, we have a four, factors of W there and one factor of W there. So we do four minus one and that makes three. Next up, still cleaning it up a little bit. So, so for some teachers, this might be an okay answer depending on the question level of math you're at. Uh, but some teachers say, no, 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 we want all positive exponents. So we have more work to do because if, if you notice here, we do have a negative exponent there. So here's our fraction bar. The four goes in the denominator, boom, done there. The W squared stays in the numerator. Now we're gonna use that negative exponent rule. Uh, we have a negative exponent here. So that's the V is gonna go in the denominator and we're gonna change it from a negative five to a positive five. And then this W to the third power stays in the numerator. So now the other way of going about this is removing common factors or canceling. So we're going to start out by looking at the numbers, then we'll do the U's, the V's, the W's. So the numbers first. So both of these, we're thinking it's a fraction. We can remove a factor of seven or divide out a seven. So seven divided by seven and then 28 divided by seven is gonna be four. Now let's look at the U's. At most, we can remove seven factors of U. So remove seven of the nine U's here, and that's gonna leave us with two U's, and then remove seven factors of U, no more U's there. Next up, let's look at the V's. We have one factor of V, six factors of V, so at most, we can remove one factor of V. So take away the one factor V there. And then of these six, we're going to remove one of them, leaving us with five factors of V. Now let's look at the W's. We have four factors of W, one factor of W, so we can remove one factor of W from the four. It leaves three factors of W and no more factors of W in the denominator. Now we just clean up what is left over after removing common factors or canceling. So we have the four moving from left to right here. And then for U's, we have two U's in the numerator and then left to right again, the V's, we have five V's remaining there. So V to the fifth. And then the W's, we have three factors of W in the numerator for W to the third power. Looking at this example, we have X to the negative two, Y to the ninth and Z, one factor of Z in the numerator. Now in the denominator, x cubed, y to the negative fifth, and z to the seventh. Now, there are two different ways of going about this. Uh, we'll do each separate. Th these two ways, kind of half a dozen or six, whichever you like the best. So first up, just use the quotient rule. We're doing x to the negative two and x to the third power. And using the quotient rule, rule we're going to subtract the exponent. So we have negative two minus three. So you owe $2 and you owe another $3. Now you're going to owe $5 to both those people total. 
Now let's look at the, the y base. That's a 9 minus a negative 5. So remember, when we minus a negative, we just, in our brains, pretend it's plus. So it's 9 plus 5. That's going to make to the 14th power. Next up, we have one factor of z and seven factors of z. So we're going to do one minus seven. One minus seven, you have a dollar, you owe seven dollars. So you don't have enough to pay it off. So it's going to be a negative. And then seven minus one gives you six dollars that you owe. Now we clean it up. Again, some teachers don't like the negative exponents. Depends on what level of math you're at for the most part. But in this case here, we are going to make all the exponents positives. So let's look at the x's. We have a negative exponent. So the x's are going to go in the denominator and we're going to change it from a negative five to a positive five. And then for the y's, those just stay in the numerator, y to the 14th. And then for the z, that's going to, it's got a negative exponent. So it's going to go in the denominator and change that negative six to a positive six. So there's one way of doing it using the quotient property and then the negative exponent property. Now, the other way is put these where they go. Start with the negative exponents first. So in this case here, we look at this, this x to the negative two. Well, that goes in the denominator as a positive two or an x squared. Next up, this y to the ninth stays in the numerator as y to the ninth. The z, it's a positive exponent. It's a z to the positive one, so it stays there. Now let's look down here. We have an x to the third power. That doesn't move. It just stays where it is in the denominator. y to the negative fifth, oh, that's a negative exponent. So it's going to pop from denominator to numerator or vice versa. So that's going to be a y to the positive fifth power. And then the z already has a positive exponent, so it stays in the denominator. And now we do our product rule starting out. We have a x squared and an x cubed. So product rule says we're going to add those exponents. 2 plus 3, that's going to make 5. And now we can do the y's. So we have a y to the ninth and a y to the fifth. Add the exponents, product rule. So that's going to make a y to the 14th. And now let's look at the z here. So we're going to be removing or canceling z. So we can remove one factor of z from the numerator and one factor from the denominator. So we'll remove one of the seven, leaving us with six factors of z still in the denominator there. So again, you can choose which way you like better, which way for, fits best with your brain. Please remember to get all of these formulas, all these rules, all of these properties into the formula section of your notebook. Again, I do recommend leaving the last five to 10 pages of your notebook. That way, as you're doing homework, you can just flip right to the back and there's all your formulas.